This video should probably start with a little bit of a disclaimer. The climax being dealt with in this video is only relating to film, video, literature, and other forms of storytelling. If you were hoping for something else, happy hunting, and maybe drop a like since I didn't make you wait around to the end of the video for that revelation. Now, on to the essay. So, what is a climax? If you'll think back to your high school English class circa 9th grade or so, possibly 8th if you were on an advanced track, you might remember this graphic, Story Mountain. This is meant to illustrate the basic structure that most stories will follow. We start on flat ground with exposition. You begin your climb with rising action and a little give and retreat. This builds tension. As that tension builds, you eventually reach the peak or climax where the story comes to a head. Then you gently coast down falling action into a resolution back on flat earth. Overall, it's a pretty good representation of storytelling, and if this works for you and you want something more in depth, then Blake Snyder's Save the Cat is a must. But if you're like me, you pretty much left high school with an image of Story Mountain stuck in your head with no real understanding of what a climax actually is. Which takes us back to our original question, what is a climax? I would argue that a climax is a perfect moment. And that's what every film is trying to achieve. A perfect moment. Action films generally have a pretty easily identifiable climax. Often it's when the protagonist and antagonist come head to head. So let's take a look at the Karate Kid. We know that the fight between Daniel and Johnny is the climax because of their escalating conflict. They've met a few times before, and since our hero wins this time, we can safely assume that this is in fact the climax. But there's another principle of storytelling at work here that takes this climax the extra mile, and that's Chekhov's gun. Not that Chekhov. Basically, Chekhov's gun says that if a gun appears in the story, at some point it needs to be shot. Our gun, in this instance, is the crane kick. The crane kick appears three separate times throughout the Karate Kid. The first time, Miyagi performs the kick, the second time, Daniel performs the kick and fails. Finally, Daniel performs the kick and succeeds. This serves to reinforce the climax. It's a climax for dummies, if you will. And by tying all of those loose ends together at the same moment, the Karate Kid is able to achieve a perfect moment. This happens in most movies, but in my opinion, no film quite delivers on these subtle payoffs in the same way as the 1987 version of Overboard. When Goldie Hawn appears in a skimpy bathing suit, it's only minutes later that Kurt Russell references this information. She does have a small strawberry-like birthmark. Uh, it's kind of high up on her left cheek. It's unique. And these subtle one-liners are laced all throughout the film. The boys say this is a job for Dr. Death. Mark. This is a job for Dr. We gotta do something, right, Dad? And when Kurt Russell sees the ship and decides to go after Goldie Hawn, he says he's Dr. Death. Who is it? Dr. Death! Let's go! We're gonna go. In many ways, these one liners come off as the director's way of flirting with his audience, which is appropriate for a romantic comedy. But there are really only two big guns in the film the golf course and Arturo. The golf course is referenced multiple times. We can see Kurt Russell's character working on it in the background. He and Billy talk about it. Hey, listen, then pretty soon we'll get that miniature golf course deal and uh, we'll be in business. And really, it becomes sort of a well-nested B-plot. In theory, the B-plot and A-plot would converge at the climax. If we flip back to the Karate Kid, Daniel doesn't officially get the girl until the climactic battle. Overboard, though, seems to resolve the B-plot a little early, and I think this plays into the idea of the director flirting with his audience. Arturo's story, on the other hand, is not referenced nearly as often as the golf course, but it does serve to reinforce the climax. Kurt Russell explains to Goldie Hawn's character Arturo's story. He's a fisherman, and he met this beautiful girl his first night in town, Katarina, and um, eventually they fell in love. But the problem was that 
Katarina's father was the territorial governor, and I guess he didn't want his only little girl running around with a lowly fisherman, so he told Arturo that he'd have to ship off, which he did, but not before he told Katarina that he'd be back for her. And when he came back, he'd signal with three long blasts, just like you heard. She could dive off the rocks into the water and swim out to the boat, and they'd be on their way. Oh, I love this story. So, and sure enough, when the climactic moment happens, Overboard references and parallels Arturo's story. Marina! Arturo! Turning a climactic moment into a perfect moment. I know, it's been a while. I'm a bit rusty. My bad. <laughs>